Hey, Ricky, you know what's awesome? What's that, Billy? Girls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. All right, so we mentioned it um, in our Saturday morning cartoons, that, that couple of uh, TV shows that had an effect on our our mentality, so to speak, and then on the forum that we've posted a couple of pictures that that uh, on Boba Fett Appreciation Day, the picture of Phoebe Cates got more likes than all of the <laughs> Boba Fett pictures combined. So we, we'd had this conversation before because, you know, it's like with with modern celebrity. Right. So like you can go to Twitter and if you have a if you have a celebrity crush or somebody you, you could you can tweet to them and it's not unheard of that they'd actually respond or like it or actually acknowledge that you exist. But back when we were kids, they were like goddesses. Like they were untouchable. (laughs) Just a dream. (laughs) You know, they got the, the the Ferrari, you know, like at least the guys that are around them have Ferraris and airplanes and airwolves and, (laughs) and, and machine guns and all kinds of fun stuff. And you're just some dopey kid. Like, watching it on tv like <laughs> you're like hey babe i'd love to come pick you up on my huffy 10 speed and take you around town <laughs> exactly right <laughs> it's just like so uh, we decided we'd, we'd make a little uh discussion about some of the dream girls from from back in the day um you know i mentioned early early on you know the spider-man is amazing friends old firestar like <laughs> have no idea why because Iceman's much cooler as far as things go but look, I just couldn't look away <laughs> well I, th- I think that part of it because well one it's 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 a woman but two your influence because it's superheroes right so you got Spider-Man oh I love Spider-Man so here's a girl that's hanging out with Spider-Man who's pretty dang cool uh-huh. but at the same time you're like yeah all right <laughs> Yeah, and then she wears a bodysuit under her uh, under her clothes. Sure, like because <laughs> Spider Man does. Yeah, so why not? Like... <laughs> <laughs> and then of course we we no like everyone nobody we'd be remiss if we didn't mention you know good old Wonder Woman Linda Carter. Oh yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Um, I, honest, you know, you, you you have to think because Linda Carter. I mean, I know she was very popular in the in the seventies, in the late seventies. She didn't do a whole whole lot. She's known for one role. Yeah. Right. Like she she if you ask if you say Linda Carter, ninety nine out of a hundred people are gonna say Wonder Woman and the other one's gonna say who? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, she she did have the occasional of course you had your, your uh Battle of the Network stars and shows like that course. where they would have them. But she did have her own musical special one time, like a variety show. And I don't know if you remember this or not, but you can find a clip of it on YouTube where it's Linda Carter, and she's doing a tribute to Kiss. Oh yeah, and that, I've seen that that bodysuit that she's in. Uh huh. That is a very bizarre video <laughs> that you. I mean, like, you know. <laughs> well, you watch it one it, time just to watch her, and then the second time to see what else is going on. <laughs> yeah, and then, then, then you realize that she's not alone on stage. There's, right. <laughs> all these strange dancers dressed like, like Dude, Kiss with feathers. I, I and, can't. And stuff. I can't tell you how disappointed I was too because. I was, in my thinking, as a kid, you know, I was I, I didn't even watch the show because it was Linda Carter. I heard Kiss was going to be on here, <laughs> right? And then when I see these guys coming out dressed like Kiss, she's singing I Was Made For Love You, and obviously these are like solid gold dancers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dressed in Kiss makeup. I was mortified. <laughs> That that was a very strange, strange <laughs> video. I mean, but like in the back then, like everybody had a variety yeah. hour. Everybody oh, yeah. had a like you know you had the Brady Bunch and you know just different. Tony Orlando star- and Dawn, Sonny and Cher. Yeah. I mean, everybody had a show back then. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, but yeah, that's what what I mean is though she she was so well known for Wonder Woman, yeah. and so beloved for that role, yeah. that even now with with you know Gal Gadot, she's being compared to Linda Carter in like just about every way. Yeah, it's like sure the, the way she looks, the way she acts, the way she fills out her suit, the way you know it's like all these different different things. And it's like there's been a lot of Batman's. Yeah, 
there's been a there's been a lot of supermans you know you have your there's you know a lot of jokers a lot of you know different different characters have had a lot of people fill in the you know fill in that that costume and to have it almost like you know like yeah Lin, linda carter was kind of passing a torch yeah it almost seems like nobody else was willing to touch it because she was just so good at it <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's kind of the same deal with the Hulk too. Look how long it took for a Hulk to actually come out that was even in the same ballpark, and you know, uh, it's just one of those things. It just works, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like Kurt Russell in a row. I mean, whatever he's in, he's Snake Plissken. He's you know Jack Burton. You you can't just replace him and it and it work, mm-hmm. you know. No, that's that's absolutely true, and. uh so yeah, I think whenever I was, when I was really small, those were my my probably my my primary role models, not role models, but uh, but you know you know what it is with Linda Carter. I mean, one that she's absolutely gorgeous, but she has that Charlie's Angels vibe about her. But she's one mm-hmm. woman, you know. I think that's what it is because she's beautiful, but she's tough, you know. But she. She's nice when she talks to people, but she gets down and dirty when it comes comes down to, to business. Mm-hmm. I, I think you can kind of see that parallel there of she could have very easily fit in Charlie's Angels in a way, too. I, 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 I totally agree. So, um, so the question is, the loaded question, which Charlie's Angels? <laughs> who, who is your favorite Charlie, Charlie's Angel? Well, I think I'm going to have to, well, we posted that picture of Tanya Roberts, but I know that was much later. <laughs> but uh, no, for me, it was, for me, it's going to be Jacqueline Smith. That's, that's my. Uh, yeah, man. I mean. That's, that's, I mean, she's just. Yeah. Everybody was fair and crazy <laughs> back in the day. Right. And I get it. I, I think I was one of those kids too, because you had, you know, well, one who she was married to at the time. You also had the, the poster that was out there, but beauty wise. Man, Jacqueline Smith is I, amazing. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. I, and I, I remember when my parents used to watch that show, because I was, I was little when it was on, and my parents used to watch that show, and I'd just be, like, I was not interested in it unless she was on screen. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, Kate Jackson, eh. Fair Fawcett, eh. Yeah. Jacqueline Smith was on screen. I was like, I'm watching this. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, but... <laughs> I'm gonna keep my eye on it. <laughs> oh man! But yeah, the, we we posted that picture of uh, uh, Heather Thomas, which is funny because because of the 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 blonde the the, the blonde issue, they yeah. get her and Heather Locklear mixed up. Yeah, but oh, you know, yeah. Heather, Heather Heather Thomas was on the Fall Guy, and uh, with the ex husband you know. of Farrah Fawcett. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> right? And. Uh, uh, Scott so, said that he was pretty upset that in our our bounty hunter uh, poll between Boba Fett, Colt Seavers, that, that, <laughs> that uh, he he lost. So I was like, don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna have some some battle royales coming out of some of these things because there's just too much fun stuff to talk about. But um, and Heather Thomas is also in T.J. Hooker. T.J. Which, Hooker, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, it's. <laughs> So she wasn't just a pinup girl, but I do remember when I was a kid, we'd go to, uh, well, I live in a small town. We had this little, what would you even call it? It wasn't like a five and dime. It was, it was just kind of like an everything store. It wasn't a grocery store, but you'd go there and they'd have like, they'd have toys. They'd have like He-Man and G.I. Joe's and then they'd have like, like bicycles. Yeah. Um, they didn't sell food. <clears throat> And it wasn't like a Kmart sort of thing. It was called Wins. Hmm. I don't know if you ever heard of it. No. But um, they had a poster section, and you can go over and flip, and it would always be pictures of Iron Maiden. Like like some of these images, like some of the stuff that we're talking about, like I have these images burned in my brain. Sure. There's like this Iron Maiden poster of Can I Play With Madness where the fist <laughs> is going through his head and yeah. holding his brain out the other side. Yeah. You know, just uh, the, the, the guy in the uh, – uh, 
straight jacket, you know, Eddie's all like, ah, yeah. and then, like you flip and in between and just be these bikini girls. Absolutely. You know, and like Heather Thomas and, you know, different, most of them you didn't know who they were, but she was actually a celebrity that was also a pinup. Right. And I, you know, um, yeah, I remember the Heather Thomas posters. That's probably the, like, her and then later Samantha Fox was kind of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's it's that 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 puberty thing, man. Because I remember the videos were coming to MTV, and I would just lock up. <laughs> and just, just watching the TV, just like ah, uh, right. So yeah, it's it's amazing how. And again, it's all about when we talked about just MTV and how it all lined up. It hit right at that age for me to where life was changing, right? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, and I think I said before that the, the, the first female that I was like, wow, was Blondie on American Bandstand. Mm-hmm. And, of course, that just carried over into, the, obviously, the MTV generation. And, you know, there's even a time there where I thought Chrissy Hind was kind of hot. And I go, eh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was because she was I the rocker know. chick, you know. Well, dude, that's that was the thing. Like, I'm well, with the rocker chicks probably because... I was gonna say my like, there was a couple. There was a couple more I wanted to talk about before we got to the rocker. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, like, let's next, keep going. No, no, no. I mean, we 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 certainly no. Like, I didn't want to skip past it, but so I think the next for for my age group was gonna be Alyssa Milano. Sure. And the weird thing was like, Alyssa Milano is like a year or so older than me, so we're like precisely the same age. So when she was famous on TV, yeah. She kind of looked like all the girls at school anyway. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't for me anyway, it wasn't a whole lot different than, you know, like the same, the, the same cute girls who were inaccessible at school were also <laughs> inaccessible on TV. So everybody had a crush on her. And I was never like, 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 hey man, if she would have called my house and asked if I wanted to go out, I would have certainly been like, well, sure. Yeah. You know, hell yeah. But I was never like just infatuated and like drop dead. But Alyssa Milano. She she's kind of crafted herself into an internet personality now. Yeah, like in a sort in, in a sort of in a sort of Wacko, weird, yeah, <laughs> weird, weird sort of way. But I mean, I don't think a lot of people who either like her or dislike her now realize how actually popular she was. Oh yeah, with the with who's the boss? I mean, a lot of like. Commando. Were, well, back back whenever there was actually magazines. I know magazines actually, you know, they still exist. But remember, you'd go to the store with your parents, and there'd be actually magazines, like yeah. Fangoria, and there was all these teenager magazines that had pictures of like Corey Haim and Corey Feldman, and Teen Lisa Beat. And, there was Teen Beat. You know, there was kind of stuff. sixteen. All those magazines, yeah. And they're always talking about you know who who they had a crush on and stuff like that, and. um that was another one of those things that was just kind of lost on me, but it was there. It was part of pop culture. It was the same as, you know, just like it was, it was this, it was alongside MTV. It was this kind of just celebrity amplification, <coughs> marketing and stuff. And Alyssa Milano was huge. Well, uh, but, but the thing about it, and I think, I think we're kind of getting to that point because it's one thing to like, you know, Wonder Woman and all these people that were larger than life, but Alyssa Milano made it feel like the girl next door, the the wholesome. Mm-hmm. You know, George Carlin always talk about, hey, you know, who do you fantasize about when you're doing your business? Well, he said for him it was never the celebrities; it was always, you know, the girl next door. He's like, hey, this could happen. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it could, right? Because eventually you're going to find somebody's girl next door and go, go, go out with them, right? But when you go back and you look at the ones that we like, just like Marsha Brady for my age group, um, you know, like you said, Alyssa Milano, if you go to Elizabeth Shue, all these characters are Phoebe Cates, the girl next door, you know? Right. Well, and that's what that's what Playboy built an empire on. Yeah. You know, like, none of those girls were girl next door, but they, they set them up to to be like that yeah and it's like i don't know whose whose door they live next to but it certainly wasn't <laughs> mine but uh but that's a good one because i wrote this down because i was my 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 kids like to watch wheel of fortune so do you remember the giant huge big deal about vanna white and playboy oh yeah yeah it's like 
we have Vanna White. She was a huge celebrity. It's like that, like mid '80s. She's a huge. Will of Fortune was at its peak. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's still on TV. Yeah. But it's like, oh, we have Vanna White. We have Vanna White. It was probably like their biggest selling issue ever, and you got it, and it was like, like Sears catalog. <laughs> it was like the the biggest letdown of ever. You're just like, there's nothing more like Victoria's Secret is more risque than that. It's like you had to have somebody you like had to have a friend that had a brother who had a dad who could get like it's like scoring some kind of crazy drug, and you finally get it. You're like, whoa, check it out. Oh man, <laughs> that, was the, that was the biggest letdown ever. <laughs> well, then you also had the, the 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 thing with Madonna as well, right? Because she mm-hmm. became the big superstar, and then Playboy got their hands on her nude pictures of the time, which were not great. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And then she turned she turned she turned around and made that book like in the early nineties. She's yeah. like, oh, here. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to let them make the money off of it. Just send it straight to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll autograph it for you. <laughs> uh, oh, man. So here's one. Here's an oddball for you that uh, I've, I've always liked. And again, it's and I'm, I'm stepping ahead of the boundaries, but this is early MTV again. But uh, Kim Wilde, you know, the girl saying kids in America. Mm-hmm. She had this kind of punky attitude to her early on and i was like all right and of course you you saw where you know we just had our anniversary and you can see i mean i I, i'm 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 all about the blondes you know so yeah dude that's usually the happy anniversary by the way it's kind of funny we're doing this show right like (laughs) (laughs) yeah but um again like i said i can't just say oh yeah yeah i guess love you honey you know (laughs) see i'm 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 fortunate i mean it obviously, it depends on on when and how good the kids are being, but I've been been with my wife for God coming up on seventeen years. So, yep. and I don't mean it like like oh my God, it's like it, it, the time passes so quickly when oh, yeah. you're yeah. you know time flies when you're having fun. That's sure. the whole thing. Like you sit there and start calculating it up, and you're like, oh crap. Yeah. But um, we've been married for for twenty three, but we've been together for thirty three. We started dating in. 80, late 85, early 86. So we've wow. been together since high school. I was a freshman in high school when we met. That's awesome. <laughs> that, dude, that is that is a razor glass to awesome. That is that is killer. But yeah, but yeah my, wife, my wife's pretty cool because she's like, she'll, she'll always have that, that, that like, some somebody will be on TV and she'll point at him and she's like, he's on my, uh, he's on my list, on that, you know, celebrity whatever list. And it's like rock and roll. <laughs> I can dig it. Well, it's like if, long, if my wife heard us talking as, about TJ Hooker, she'd be talking about Adrian's Med. That's all she'd be wanting to talk about. So, <laughs> as, long, as long as we're having a fun conversation and nobody's getting mad because you're you like the reason they put these people in front of you is because they're attractive, right? Like, like, like let's not yeah, let's not pretend otherwise. They're not putting yeah. people up there and being like, hey, you should like their personality because a lot of a lot of celebrities are jerks, right? So, yeah, uh, male and female, like it does, it goes both ways. But um, I was gonna say, like the that was another one that was very for me right before we get into the rockers because it was probably it was was uh everybody fell in love with Michelle Pfeiffer when she mm-hmm. I guess when she what, what would it, before Batman she was big when Batman came out but well Scarface what, was your starting point and of course she well, she kept getting roles outside well Grease too again Adrian, say, Adrian's me, mad, H, so. <laughs> H, H, HBO playing yep. Grease 2 on yep. heavy rotation mm-hmm. um total stupid teenage fantasy movie where like he flies the motorcycle off into space. <laughs> like yeah. it's just ridiculous. Yeah. But um yeah, Michelle Fiverr in Grease too. Like that yeah. was that was one that I just could not look away from. She's just gorgeous. She's yeah. just And then when she was in Catwoman, that even, yeah. even like um that I just said that whole like you know, my list and I'm not you know like I my type is brunette. but if michelle Pfeiffer were to ever like throw throw me an eyebrow she's on my list be like hey i gotta go it's michelle Pfeiffer. what you gonna do 
<laughs> so yeah, yeah. Coming coming out of Greece too around the same time period. You 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 like you said, you put the picture out there. But yeah, man, Tanya Roberts from Beastmaster. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And then follow that up with the double bill of Sheena. Dude. And here's the thing, because my parents when I think when I think back about it, like my parents are very strange <laughs> because they they were they were they were I don't want to say pretty religious, like for a while there, like they kind of, they kind of passed in and out of phases. But when I was really small, they were pretty religious. Right. Yeah. So we were at church every Sunday. <clears throat> my dad had opinions on stuff. Like he didn't like the fact that all my toys were so demonic with like yeah. Skeletor and you know, like all that. It's just like, ah, oh, you know, cause obviously you had the religious, right. The satanic panic, everybody's talking about things and talk radio, whatever. Right. Right. But I remember, dude, it's like, hey, we're going to watch this movie. <laughs> and they, my sister was a baby. She's probably asleep in her crib because I was, <clears throat> I was little. Like, we're going to watch this movie. And it turned out to be Beastmaster, right? <laughs> and like, they made popcorn and like mixed up some chocolate milk. And we were sitting on the couch and we were watching Beastmaster and Beastmaster is violent. Oh yeah, as as all hell. Like, yeah, they do. They do. They do baby sacrifice. <laughs> they, they, they 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 have the the ring that watches people that he stabs. Yeah, like yeah. They they have the flying <clears throat> bat winged things that suck people oh, like, man. insides out. Those things. I mean, it terrified me as a kid, man. <laughs> Beastmaster is awesome, yeah, but it, it was it was it was not a movie for an eight year old. But the point at which it just got too much, and my mom sent me away for a while, was that <laughs> when they're at the river scene in the with, swim, uh, with when Tanya, they're swimming. With, yeah, with, with, <laughs> this is where you draw stuff. the line. You know? <laughs> it's like, ooh, here, here, you have to go away. <laughs> okay, you can come back. You can come back. <laughs> like, they had that thing where they put that thing in that dude's ear. I mean, yeah. like there was. There yeah. are so many scenes in Beastmaster that are just so, like, over let's, the top. Let's save that for an episode. <laughs> <laughs> we will. <laughs> but, but it was the boobs. Like, you can't see sure. that. Like, yeah. Like, that's not... Yeah. We don't mind you seeing people getting stabbed and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, nudity, that's a big no-no. Yeah. yeah. It's strange how we're so... raised that, that way. I mean, not that I'm saying that it's right. I mean, I get it. <laughs> but I, I think it's just to avoid questions. Why are they yep. naked? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Why does she look like that? Because she can. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though, man. It's true. Daddy, does mommy look like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. So that... They're not worried about it messing up and messing us up. They're just afraid of the questions. <laughs> yeah. Which. I can I can get because, um, sure. My <laughs> we're 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 about tired. We're we're been in this quarantine for so long that the children shows we, we've hit the end of Disney Plus already. We're just <laughs> like we're done. And so my wife's just like, okay, so what what are some movies that we can watch that are accessible for the children? Like, like so we look at Netflix. Netflix has Back to the Future Part Two and Three. They don't have Part One, right? Yeah. We're like, okay. So she's like, she's like, I'm buying part one. So we watch Back to the Future. Juliet's sitting there watching with us. And she's asking questions here and there. Like, what does this mean? Like, what's going on? <coughs> Excuse me, as one would. But then when the movie ends, she's like, oh, hey, Dad, I know why they were calling it Back to the Future. And you're <laughs> like, yeah, you're sh I'm hoping that you've got at least that much out of it. Because, right. like, <laughs> she's like. Then, then we realize how much that they don't know about stuff. Because she's sure. like, "Why do those yeah. guys? Why do those guys want to shoot that? Why do they want to shoot him?" Yeah. And and of course, this is my daughter's take on things. But like, like because plutonium is is uh, is it? What did I tell her? I was like, it's extremely powerful. They only they use it in bombs, and it can power cities. So it's it's very extremely. Uh, expensive and also illegal so only the government can have it and those guys stole it and he stole it from them 
And so that's why they're mad and want to shoot him. She goes, oh, I thought it was like mall security. She thought it was like the guys that drive <laughs> around. <laughs> and they were just like, dudes. I was like, yeah, mall security doesn't generally drive around with AK-47s and RPGs. But hey, Kid logic, man. You got to love it. Kid logic. It's right? the best. <laughs> A lot of times they make you stop and go, yeah, that, yeah, I can see where you get that. You know, <laughs> they're just hanging funny. out in the mall parking lot in the middle of the night and some yeah. dudes just drive up and start shooting <laughs> like well, i guess that you know i won't hang out in mall parking lots it'll be cool <laughs> it'll be all right uh, and that's uh, that's that thing is is when they hit that magic age it's when they get most impressionable is when they start understanding everything and they can start putting the pieces together so that, that mm-hmm. that's really that point when that switch comes on and that's that's so incredible i mean that's that's what we're talking about here. You know, it's when that switch gets turned on and it's almost like you've just opened your eyes for the first time to your own universe. Mm -hmm. You look around and be like, Oh, this is, well, that that was the thing. So we're like, okay, well back to the future worked. Like how about short circuit? (laughs) We're sitting at the dinner table. I was like, what about short circuit? You know, because Meg was like, dude, Back to the Future has a lot more cuss words than I remember. Mm, I was like, yeah. I was like, that's the eighties. They just kind of did that. Like, if they if they had it if if they were allowed three words they just used them, right? Right. It's like short circuit has a whole lot more bad words. I remember. Like, yeah. It's it's that pointless cussing that they did in the eighties a lot. Right. And Julia, it's like, what's short circuit about? Um, we're like it's about a robot. She goes, how about Terminator? I'm like you are not watching <laughs> Terminator, dude. Like stop asking me about Terminator. <laughs> that's that's her next level, right? <laughs> That's the one. That's, I'm, that's the one I'm going to break him on because he won't let me watch it for some reason, right? Mm-hmm. I did the same thing with my daughter. She, I mean, she grew up. She had her own copy of Halloween at a very early age, which I don't, I don't uh, recommend <laughs> to anybody <laughs> raising kids. But she became infatuated with the original Halloween. From there, I beca- I grew a a horror freak, right? And uh, she kept pressing my buttons about Last House on the Left. I was like, no, absolutely uh, not. We're yes. not watching Last House. She'd see it. I've seen this. I've seen this. I've seen this. So I don't know why I can't see that. And finally, one day, I just broke and let her watch it. And <laughs> she was over there crying, going, this is terrible. I was like, tried to tell you. you know? Yeah, I mean, there's there's things out there that just are not. They're, they're not. But as a kid, well, as, you're saying, "All right, there's something there that they're not letting me be exposed to, and I, I, you know, I want to test the waters." You know. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how far I can get. That was the like, just she, she does that with certain movies. She'll be like, "So, hey, why is he wearing a mask?" <laughs> like, because he's ugly underneath. She like, do they show him ugly without the mask on? <laughs> it's like, like she was asking about Michael Myers. Yeah. And I was like, they show him for about half a second. She was like, in which movie? Like, she was like, getting <laughs> she's already playing so like, it she's out. Dig, she's digging it in. Like, nope, we're not watching any Halloweens. <clears throat> not yet. Man. So you're talking about the rock chicks, dude. Yeah. So that, there's, there's two songs that are, I mean, but uh, Lita Ford. Oh, yeah. That, that Kiss Me Deadly. Kiss Me Deadly video. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah, just knock you right over. Cause they did a just... yeah, cause you know I'm kind of hit and miss with her because sometimes she looks really great and then sometimes you're like, eh, not so great. Yeah. But yeah, she's a rocker chick. But, <laughs> but, but that <laughs> that video, they did exactly what they were trying to do. Cause yeah, she's she's that mm-hmm. and close my eyes forever. They're both videos. She yep. looks pretty fantastic again. Yeah, she's she's pretty awesome. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say there's two songs like the Runaways have have you know yeah. Cherry Bomb. They've got a right. few others. She was she and Joan Jett were yep. obviously the the anchors of that band. Like they they kind of knew what they were gonna yeah like like this is this is not the band that's gonna get us over the top. We're gonna go off and do our own things. And yeah. both of them were just rocking as hell. Yeah, you know it's like they're they're um, it's, it, it would be interesting because. Lita Ford was kind of more into that kind of glam rock, and mm-hmm. Joan Jett was more into the, the the dirty punk. Yep. And then you think about <laughs> what Guns N' Roses eventually was. <laughs> like pulled those two right. So they were they were together in the Runaways, which is essentially a punk band. Mm-hmm. 
and then they separated and kind of amplified their own personas out of it it would have been interesting to see what they would have if they would have come back together what they would have done because yeah um i i think i think about that a lot honestly i honestly i i often think about joan jett in terms of like slash and lita ford in terms of like axel just like the blonde and the brunette like yeah you know <laughs> but, you always kind of think in the back of your mind maybe one day at least them two get together and do a project together you know mm-hmm. because they're still still both very very capable you know musically yeah, yeah. So it would be great to see them do some sort of project all these years later together. Maybe form a new band. Don't worry about dragging out the old band. Just, hey, let's get together. Try to get the old vibe, but let's do it with some mm. new blood kind of deal. Yeah, I think it'd be awesome. Uh, and it's funny because, of course, I was a Lita Ford fan, and, and Danny from Hail Ming was always about Joan Jett. So there you go. We, <laughs> we kind of had that, that odd and end thing, right? It's well, I I just remember that that video for Kiss Me Deadly. Was, oh yeah, stop stopping your tracks. Like again, MTV. It's like the radio. Like you had you had MTV on because it was MTV. It was just on, and if somebody wasn't specifically watching something else, MTV was on because it was music. Right. And then like you'd be walking through, and it would be like a George Michael video, and you'd be like whatever. Every now and then it would be like a Lita Ford video, and you'd stop. And... Yeah watch it or whenever whenever a a heart video came on right (laughs) yeah nancy wilson jumping around yeah 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 she's she's pretty uh and and again in the 80s they knew how to do it with the hair and the lights and the the flying v guitars and the leather pants and like the (laughs) they just and, and you know, uh, I mean, and again, they this to, and you you know, talking about the Lita Ford video. I mean, you, the the total focus is her on them in those spandex pants with the knee pads, right? But <laughs> but if you noticed every guy in the band, you never really see their faces, right? It's like a mm-hmm. bunch of faceless macho dudes playing back up to to her, and that's exactly what they're trying to make out. Same thing with the the heart videos, man. They they pumped them up. And and made them glamorous, and the dudes were just kind of the dudes back there in the back with spiky hair, going, "Yeah, I'm in heart," you know. <laughs> well, and well, honestly, I think there's a lot of those guys that were probably just studio musicians got pulled in because you've seen uh, you've seen those cautionary tales of, yeah, you know, like in the in the movies where it's like, "Hey, we, we like your sound, yeah, but we only want you." <laughs> and so, like, <laughs> you know, like the lead singer of the band just goes off with a whole yeah. bunch of new players, sure. And, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, Hart was always an established band. I mean, it was always about the sisters, but they always had that group of musicians that were with them through a lot of years. But okay. when it got to the video age, it didn't matter, right? It was going to be about <laughs> like... going to be about the sisters, and you know, Pat Benatar, same deal. She always had the same band. Joan Jett, same band. You just mm-hmm. I, she's got the, still the majority of the same band now, but it didn't really matter. You know, they're selling. The, her you know well and you mentioned you mentioned chrissy hind earlier yeah i can't imagine i can't imagine how much it would suck to be the pretty much the only survivor of a band that didn't fly into a mountain right yeah. you know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> like every, everybody in the pretenders died except for like her and maybe one other guy who quit in like yeah the yeah late 70s and crazy i'm like dude that sucks yeah they they, they lived a hard-ass life they, they i mean they really did but and then their music's so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? like it's, um, you get it out of Alice in Chains. The Pretenders, right. not so much. You know? yeah. <laughs> but... In the middle of the road, yeah! <laughs> but, uh, man, come on. Olivia Newton-John. I mean... Uh, uh, oh, yeah. What can you say? I mean, when, when Physical came out and she cut the hair off short, it was just like, what just happened? <laughs> Oh. What just happened to my body? Because I don't understand. <laughs> Dude, uh, I was Louie Newton John was. I mean, she's always been huge. But yeah, yeah. She, she was really big when I was a little kid, and I, I, I told posted this on Facebook a couple times, and people always laugh. But so like, my we we had a huge record collection, right? Like, yeah. We, my dad had this entertainment center, and um, it was probably like three and a half feet. Uh, for a big screen TV, 
um, below it was like album storage, and then next to it was another little, little thing for the big tower speakers. Yeah. The album storage was like two levels, and that held about a quarter of his collection. It was like the prime stuff, and the rest of it was just in boxes and it was set around other places in the house. And um, you can go and you can pull records and you know play whatever you wanted. And he had a whole bunch of cool old promo stuff, but. Um, he wasn't so big into living in Chamba. My mom was, so she went and bought the records. But I didn't. I was a little kid. I didn't know. So I got, I thought Olivia Newton-John was a band, like <laughs> Peter, Paul, and Mary. I didn't realize that it was a name. Right. I thought it was Olivia Newt right. and John. And John. <laughs> Which one of you guys <laughs> is I, Newt? <laughs> I, 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 assume, I assume that Newt and John were like the guitar player and the drummer, and then like Olivia sang, because, you know... <laughs> And I swear to God, dude, it threw me hard when I figured out it was just one person. I was like, but what hey, happened to Newt? Like, Newt I, existed, and then he stopped happened, existing. What happened to Newt? They fired Newt. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Olivia now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I did the so, same thing as a kid the first time I heard Holland Oats. I'm like, really? I mean, you're talking about a country boy from Tennessee and you're telling me there's a band called Hall and & Oates. And it's like, I visualize a dude in, in coveralls with a wheelbarrow going, Hey guys, I'm Hall & Oates! Dude, my dad, so we talked about my dad and like Superman. And I, like, my dad used to call Hall & Oates the, the Cheerio truck. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you calling, why are you, like the song be on, he's like, oh, it's the Cheerio truck. It's like Hall & Oates. Hey, REO Speedwagon. I'm thinking, and they must really like cookies. Right. <laughs> so it's, but yeah, because oh. <laughs> I'll never get that image out of my mind of like a Cheerio truck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> private eyes watching you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, Dor- Doral Pesh from uh, Warlock. Mm. You familiar with yeah, her? Somebody posted that video. Holy smokes, yep. <laughs> man! Yeah, was... That that time frame, she was smoking. <laughs> I was I was just about to say Tawny Katane. Oh yeah, and she went yeah. she went out and made the the the, the Ouija board movies and stuff. <laughs> Which <there's>, board? <laughs> there's, yeah, there's never there's never going to be anything better than her crawling down the, that that car while uh, I mean while, while White Snake is screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Bachelor Party is one of my favorite comedies of all time, but her on that car takes that out anytime. <laughs> Dude, and, and, the, uh, and the video for uh, um, what was the other one? Is this love when she's packing up her stuff and leaving, and you getting the little shimmy down the hallway? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so much. So much, just like we're just making total pigs of ourselves here. Yeah. Hey, you know. <laughs> well, I was gonna say after after Tommy Katane, then I have to get into like, like all of this was just me being a kid and being like, right. oh hey, yeah, that's that's <laughs> like like Wayne's World regards like makes me feel kind of funny. Um, <laughs> oh, Tia Carrera, <laughs> right? Well, I was gonna say like my punch in the gut. And even still now, like that, that like, I have have like daydreams was uh, not even, not even her, uh, not, not the actress, but Lydia Dietz from Beetlejuice. Oh yeah. Oh man. The, the. Well, that kind of hits where you were at that point, right? Yeah. But the, man, those dark eyes, dark (laughs) clothes and the light skin. And she's just like, and, and. Man, oh man, Lydia Dietz. Well, I mean, Winona Ryder, anyway, because then she went into, she did Edward Scissorhands, right. and she turned blonde, which didn't yeah. quite work on her, but she was still, like, like, yeah. Winona Ryder had her, her crazy phase, but then she came back in Stranger Things, and she's still my age. She's still only a couple years older than me, and I'm just yep. like, yep, still, uh, <laughs> yep, <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> Uh, she's she's still as crazy as ever. Right. I mean, she's she's catbird yeah. crazy, she's knocking off the walls, the back of her house, the, <laughs> the, the, the the Christmas light Ouija board. But yeah. you know, hey, what yeah. you gonna do when your kid gets kidnapped? You might as well. Right? well that's, that's what happens when you grow <laughs> up with Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands. You know. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, for me that never was my thing because I would be afraid to like leave this person in a bad mood. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to like, man, I really want to break up, but I'm afraid she'll go hang herself. Nah, that's well, just. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, the, yeah. There, there's that. <laughs> never, never really thought of it like that. With thanks, man. <laughs> You leave her in a bad mood, you like well Johnny Depp. He tattooed her name out of his arm, and she went and stole a bunch of stuff from like the jewelry store. So I guess you find out what happens when, when mm. like life has actually told us what would happen if that happened. There you go. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I'm kind of blank from that point on, unless you started getting into some into some movies, more movie stuff. But, I mean, there's your, you know, Pat Benatar. Hey, I mean, somebody put out the picture of Legend of Billie Jean, man. I mean, Helen yeah, Slater. Helen Slater. Yeah. Yeah, I Super, mean, Supergirl. You know, like I said, you know, you kind of blank. That's whenever you, like, so Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands, that would have been like, you know, 88, 90, you know, that, that sort of right around then you start getting your own girlfriends right <laughs> like, yeah you you're, you're not as uh as in in completely in love with the celebrities cuz you got you know somebody you're at least hanging out with you know um it's not Winona Ryder and you're not going to leave her cold and sad like you just said cuz that's weird <laughs> 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 but <laughs> Yeah, you know, then go through the '90s. I don't know. Young Angelina Jolie was pretty. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't didn't dig her crazy, but she sure was pretty. Yeah. And then, of course, everybody was completely in love with Jennifer Aniston, but she always seemed a little high strung to me. You know, my, <laughs> my, my, my brother in law was always about her, but I, I did. She didn't do a lot for me, you know. So. I, I wouldn't, any of the girls from Friends, I was like, eh, yeah, 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 no. <laughs> Great show, I love the show, but I never saw somebody, I was like, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was more into Gracie Law from Big Trouble in Little China, right? <laughs> right? There's, well, and then you, you say, you know, like, your wife looks like Goldie Hawn, so it's just yeah. like, there's, you know, Kurt yeah. Russell's a lucky dude, man. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well awesome man well i think that just kind of ran through it we're gonna have to post some pictures of some of these fine ladies we will... yep and and don't just make i mean if you're listening and you're not into the ladies if, you, if you've got uh, heartthrobs out there i know uh, a friend of mine amy cross she always loved it whenever we would post pictures of like rick springfield <laughs> you know <laughs> So there's definitely those those hunks out there that you ladies are crazy about. Hey, post those too. We're we're not uh, we're not totally closed minded. <laughs> well, and, well, and the reason one of the reasons I thought this would be a good episode is because whenever I am posting the pictures of the ladies, the ladies are loving it and being right? like, "Oh, she's she's so awesome. I remember her here and there yeah. and stuff." And you know, there there shows what's awesome. Sure, I don't. You know, right. it's like if, we're not gonna get we're not gonna get politically weird. We're not gonna talk about serious stuff. This is right. what's awesome. Yeah, if you're you if know. you're if Ben Stein is your guy, hey, put a picture of Ben Stein out there. I don't <laughs> exactly, <care>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we 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 mentioned Michelle Pfeiffer from Batman Returns. You can always post up Danny DeVito. Oh Danny yeah, DeVito will liven up any discussion. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Well, I think, dude, it's been a good conversation. I think this has been a good talk about what's awesome. All right, sounds good, man. Awesome. We'll talk to you later on.